Hello. Hey, hey, Logan. This is uh, uh, your instructor for your science course, uh, Larry Stewart. Hey, you guys wanted a video to kind of help understand uh, this problem that you saw this past week. So uh, this is all I made this and hopefully this helps. And if not, we can follow up and uh, do more with it. But we'll just jump in here and uh, uh, not waste any of your time. So as I as I kind of spelled out here, there are three parts. Let me get a pen here, and that's all a bunch of red. So let's go with this blue here. <clears throat> there are three parts uh, to solving this problem: uh, part one, two, and three. And in part one, uh, you guys actually got it correct over here. You can see that right here. And so I won't spend a lot of time here. Maybe you understand how to do this. Uh, maybe you guessed right. I don't know. Who knows? But uh, just, uh, just as a reminder of what, what this is, uh, it asks you to calculate kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is just simply one-half the mass times the velocity squared. So you can see that the mass was 12,000 and the velocity was 30. So if I take half of 12,000, uh, you can see here that's, that's obviously 6,000. So we're right, we're right here. And so you got 6,000 is one of your numbers. That would be the M up here. So we're eventually going to put this number in, in that spot right there. And then the velocity squared is 30. 30 times 30, as you know, is 900. So that's right there. And then that number is going to go here. So eventually what we have is 6,000 times 900, uh, which you guys, uh, again, got correctly, uh, 5,400,000. So that's the kinetic energy. That's the KE portion of uh, understanding this problem. Now the trick is, and I think this is probably where, uh, this is probably the, the one that uh, if you weren't able to kind of fully understand uh, where they got this number from, this 46, it may be this, this note right here. So just remember that kinetic, potential energy, uh, not kinetic, but potential energy and kinetic energy, they're the same number. They're the same thing. They just keep transferring between the two. And what I mean by that is if I have this motion here like a pendulum swinging or, you know, a roller coaster or anything going down, a ball rolling down a hill and then back up, if I have that motion, okay, this number, okay, this number right here, 54 or 5,400,000, that number never changes. The percentages between the two. So like if this is the where the ball starts, then this is all potential energy here. So all 100% of our number, this number right here, is potential energy. But when the ball gets to the bottom, okay, now it's all kinetic energy. And then in between here, the percentages just uh, change. So you can imagine that the ball at this point is 50-50. 50% -50. 50 uh, potential 50% kinetic and if you need more understanding of that what I can do is I've got a simulation that I can show uh, that we can video uh, just moving and it says it's set up to where you can just watch the percentages change as a skateboarder is going up and down uh, the same motion just like a pendulum swinging uh, I can show you that so just let me know if you want to if you want to see that or if you don't want a video but you'd like to see the simulation, I can just give you the link either way. And then if you think if the ball just keeps rolling, okay, same thing. Uh, here it's 100% uh, kinetic energy. And in here it's 100% potential energy. All right, and then so when it gets over here, now it's back to 50-50. And when it gets back up to the top of the next hill, now it's back to 100% potential. So it just swings between the two. The, the total number never changes. Uh, it's just the percentage between the two. And that maybe that is the connection that you guys weren't able to, to visualize. So, knowing that, uh, now we just have to calculate uh, the height. 
Okay, and to do that, uh, we're going to use our formula here for, for potential energy. That potential energy equals uh, the g-force, which is gravity, the times the mass, times the height. And we're going to use a little bit of basic algebra uh, to, to do that. And then with that is moving the g and the m that we know. We know those numbers. We're going to move it over to the potential energy side and just simply divide. So if we plug in our 5,400,000, and we know that the gravity constant 9.8, which you had to work with in this, in this past lesson, uh, and then we know the mass uh, from the problem uh, right here. But what we don't know, the one we're trying to figure out, is the height of the hill. So if I take 9.8 times 12,000, I get one or 117,600. Now, I'm simply, as I mentioned, going to move that over, okay, across the equal sign over to this side. And when you cross over the equal sign, as, as you know, uh, you have to do the opposite sign. Over here, we're multiplying, so we have to divide. So if I bring that number over and simply divide 5,400,000 divided by 117,600, uh, then I get 45.92, and it's, and it's a long uh, decimal number answer, and that's a rounded uh, 45.92. And so then with our choices, the closest one was 46, and just round it up to, to 46 uh, equals H. So that's kind of a long uh, uh, several steps to, uh, to get there, but that's the part, uh, uh, that's, how they, that's how you do it. And again, maybe number two, as I mentioned, was the part that uh, you weren't, uh, weren't, weren't able to visualize or to see. So with that, uh, I'll end this. And after you guys watch this, if you want more follow-up, if you want more uh, information, then uh, simply let me know and we can, we can uh, proceed from there. So with that, until next time, we will say goodbye.